aircraft are really heavy machines and AT-20 itself for example can weigh up to 77,000 kilograms or 77 tons when it's fully loaded and ready for takeoff. On the other hand, an A350 can weigh up to 280 tons and still these machines, you know, defeat gravity and get up into the air. But how do they do that? I have talked the theory behind uh, this in a previous video. I'll link that video up here and also down in the description that, uh, uh, you know, video is from the ground school series. I highly recommend you guys to watch that video first. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to be applying the theory that we have learned over there in the actual cockpit of an uh, aircraft in the simulator here. And then let's look at how we take off from the cockpit. So if you guys are for this video, fasten those seat belts because we're ready for takeoff. and welcome back to the FlyTuber flying simplified through YouTube. My name is Ali Azgar and on this channel I talk about interesting aviation facts and aircraft knowledge and aircraft theory in the ground school series and also in the flight school series I fly aircraft and you know I sh apply these uh, theory uh, learned from the ground school series in the flight school series and then I share it with you guys as well. So if any of those things are you know interesting to you and if you haven't subscribed yet and if you are new here you might want to subscribe to the channel you can do that from the red subscribe button or the uh, channel logo down here let's continue with the video like i said i highly recommend you guys to watch that previous video from the ground school series first because otherwise this video might not make much sense to you guys and on the other hand i anyways won't share much theory or technical stuff in this video because i have already covered that in that video so yeah go ahead and watch that video and having said that let's look at how we actually take off an aircraft and uh, you know if i were to summarize it or to put it in a crux there are two main reasons the two main things the factors that we uh, use and take advantage of in order uh, for the aircraft to take off and that is first we accelerate down the runway we increase our speed so as to increase the lift and the other thing is we rotate or we point the nose of the aircraft up towards the sky creating that angle known as the angle of attack and also the engines pointing towards the sky themselves help the aircraft you know defeat gravity and get up in the air now I told you guys that we need the aircraft to be at a minimum speed and we need to rotate it at a particular speed in order for it to take off but how fast is this the answer is for smaller aircraft like Cessna 152 or Cessna 172 which is the smaller two to four seater or six seater uh, training aircraft for these airplanes there is a predetermined or a pre-fixed speed the rotation speed at which it is recommended to rotate the aircraft and uh, you know uh, uh, we, we rotate at that speed and irrespective of how many passengers we are carrying the aircraft will pretty much lift up the reason is at this speed it will guarantee that an aircraft will take off because there's not a huge variation uh, in the total takeoff weight you know one or two passengers doesn't uh, you know uh, make much difference but however on a bigger passenger airplane like an A320 or Boeing 737 for example or the bigger other bigger airplanes as well uh, the capacity is almost 180 200 300 passengers like that and it's not mandatory that it's in each and every flight we have a full load you know on, a, on one day you could have a full load of 180 passengers along with the full cargo load and their luggage but on the other hand um, some other day you might just have 50 passengers or 30 passengers or even worse like in this covid situations right so there is a huge a lot of variation a lot of difference uh, day to day or even flight to flight uh, at the take off the, the the weight of the aircraft is really variable so that is the reason why we need to calculate the rotation speed for each and every takeoff depending on that runway depending on the passengers and the weight that you are carrying right uh, so uh, say that you are doing a four four sector flight today then you need to calculate these four separate rotation speeds now without any further delay uh, let's go ahead and look at how a Cessna 152 uh, takes off and also after that I'm gonna uh, show it to you guys how an A320 takes off uh, but before that if you guys are getting any value out of this video make sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and share uh, this video with your friends uh, let's continue with the video all right so we are right now in the cockpit of Cessna 152 aircraft you're looking at the airplane from outside and this is Indira Gandhi International Airport we are lined up at runway 2 niner on the airport and uh, you know um, uh, amazing views I just hope that you guys get to start off your training uh, as soon as possible but anyways which uh, yeah we are lined up on runway 2 niner and uh, you know this is from outside the views from outside and we can have all these dials uh, and uh, right now the aircraft is in what is known as a clean configuration meaning we don't uh, use any flaps 
and uh, um, you know uh, let's go ahead and uh, you know take a notch of flaps these are the trailing edge uh, surfaces that extend and protrude, protrude outside from the wings so let's go ahead and put uh, on the uh, a, a notch of flaps and let's see uh, uh, you know how the flaps operate so here we have the flap lever in the cockpit and you know uh, we can put it to, to different positions right now this is on takeoff flap one and I'll just show it through you from outside as well and uh, you know this is the clean configuration and as soon as I select uh, flap 1 the, the, the surface extends downwards and that is how it increases the total surface area of the wing and you can, we, we, we can put it uh, all the way down but that is used for landing anyways which uh, you know taking flaps uh, you know meaning we will increase the uh, surface area of the wing that will help us for taking off. Now, uh, let's go ahead and do a takeoff. Have a look at this. Uh, you know, keep an eye out on this uh, airspeed indicator at the bottom right uh, here. And uh, for this, for the sake of this particular takeoff, uh, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna touch any controls. I'll just push in the throttle and let the aircraft speed increase. And uh, you know, I'll let the airplane take off on its own without me giving any input. Uh, and uh, Keep an eye on, you know, how at what speed uh, the aircraft, uh, you know, lifts off on its own. Let's see, uh, you know, uh, a takeoff of Cessna 152. So let's quickly head back to the cockpit and I'll show you guys uh, what the throttle, uh, you know, looks like. This is known as a throttle of 152 and, you know, we push it in and uh, that's how we can increase the engine RPM, the power the engine is producing and that's how we can start moving and accelerate the aircraft down the runway. So let's do that. Let's push the throttle lever in all the way up to 100% and you can see that we have now started moving. Okay, so the aircraft is moving now. You can see that the aircraft is, you know, it wants to yaw to the left. It doesn't want to stay on the center line. And there is a big reason behind this. And if at all you guys know what the reason is, make sure to comment down uh, in the comments section why the aircraft wants to yaw to the left. Anyways, which uh, I'm trying to keep the runway center line. And you guys can see that it's really difficult. Obviously, in the actual aircraft, it doesn't look like this. But anyways, which, uh, you know, I, I just did not rotate i did not do anything i just wanted to keep the runway center line and the aircraft lifted on its own when sufficient speed was built up to you know get enough uh, lift oh my god there's uh, an aircraft uh, you know lining up behind uh, is that a 737 let me have a closer look let me zoom it in yeah i, I don't know uh, anyways uh, so yeah that's how a, a, a takeoff looks like uh, from a Cessna 152 so yeah that's how uh, Cessna 152 takes off let's go ahead and I'll reposition the aircraft back to the runway threshold and this time let's take off a big baby the A320 aircraft all right so we are right now on the right hand seat of the A320 cockpit the seat where I sit in and yeah this is a beautiful aircraft and it was A320 Neo we are looking at it from outside and once again we are on Indira Gandhi International Airport uh, Delhi Airport and with two niner lined up once again at exactly the same spot from where we took off the Cessna 152 and uh, yeah uh, let's uh, quickly go ahead and first let me show you how do we put flaps uh, right now we are in the clean configuration meaning we don't have any flaps the flaps are flight control surfaces that extend from uh, this uh, you know the trailing edge of the wing so yeah let, let us get back to the cockpit and I'll show you what uh, we use to extend these so on the center pedestal down here there is a lever known as the flap lever we use this to extend or retract the flaps it's you know you can see it's written flaps here so yeah we use these uh, let me just quickly put it on flaps 2 we usually take off at flaps 1 or 2 anyways and you can cross check uh, that from the uh, per ecam uh, here so let's get back out and uh, you know uh, i'll just show you once again i'm just retracting the flaps and i'll just show you once again how does it look like so let me zoom it in and you can see that this uh, there are no protruding surfaces right now and uh, you know as soon as i extend these flaps uh, you know you, you guys can see the same thing from the uh, passenger window as well you can see that there are surfaces extending from the wing and that's how we increase the surface area and once again that helps uh, us a lot in increasing the lift so yeah, uh, no more talks. Let's go ahead and take off and I'm uh, adding the take off power and increasing the speed. Uh, slowly we'll start. Yeah, right now we've started moving and uh, obviously I'm not, uh, you know, using the standard uh, procedures that we use in the airline it's just for your understanding purpose. So yeah, that's why we are also, you know, <laughs> You know, flying and taking off from outside anyways the takeoff power is set the air speed is alive we are accelerating we're speeding up down the runway center line and uh, yeah uh, for this for the sake of this takeoff once again i'm not going to touch the controls i'm not going to rotate or anything i'll just let the aircraft 
uh, you know reach its sufficient speed and uh, take off on its own keep uh, uh, an eye on the airspeed tape down here at what speed does it take off also the amount of runway the aircraft is using so somewhere about now at uh, somewhere about 180 knots the aircraft lifted up let me quickly go ahead and pause it and uh, yeah so uh, you know you can see that this much amount of runway we have used for takeoff you know this uh, particular uh, uh, line these the, the, these pair of lines are known as the uh, touchdown zone and from that main the, the second marker the first and this then this is the second we are above the second marker and this is the height and this is uh, how it took off on its own and let me just quickly reposition ourselves back on the runway center line uh, and exactly on the same spot from where we took off last time uh, and uh, this time I am going to rotate the aircraft at its uh, you know recommended uh, rotation speed or VR that we calculate for each flight right so I'll rotate it over there and then let's see uh, the difference uh, from the previous one so yeah we are lined up once again and the, you know we, I give the takeoff power the airspeed tape is alive once again we this and by the way this is the thrust levers in the Airbus and this is what we use for the engine spool up to you know increase the engine power it's very same to your uh, car accelerator so yeah takeoff power is set you can see the uh, speed is increasing and I'm trying to maintain the runway center line and keep an eye at the uh, you know airspeed somewhere about 148 or 150 knots I looted the aircraft okay so yeah 150 and obviously this is not how I know it's uh, really uh, I yanked back a lot landing gear up but this is not how you know the, in an actual aircraft it's much more smooth so let me go ahead and pause it once again and you can see we are exactly at the same spot the second marker uh, we, are, we are above the second marker from the touchdown zone but you can see that we are far much more higher this time the reason for that is because i rotated at 150 knots we uh, you know uh, left the ground we left away we kept we came uh, up in the air uh, even before uh, than the previous scenario that's why uh, you know i uh, got this height and also uh, i used uh, very little runway when we compare it to the previous one so yeah that's how the air, uh, you know an, a takeoff looks like from the a320 now one thing that you remember one line that i told in the previous video was a landing might be much more complex and difficult but on the other hand a takeoff is always much more dangerous and risky the reason why i told that is first is uh, you know for takeoff we set the engines at really really high power settings the aircraft is really at high speeds and if at all a malfunction occurs and if you do not reject in time then you might not be able to stop the aircraft until it reaches the uh, stop end of the runway and it might go ahead and you know just crash into the buildings or the uh, you know localizer uh, antenna for example and on the other hand uh, you know even uh, you know at uh, slower speeds uh, if there is a sudden uh, you know uh, blow from a side uh, a, a blow of wind a crosswind suddenly from a side uh, or if uh, an engine fails for example so so if you have this uh, uh, aircraft right there are two engines both are pushing the aircraft forward and they are producing thrust if at all suddenly one engine fails there is no force from this side but there's a lot of force from that side because it's on a uh, takeoff power and there'll be a yaw so the aircraft might you know leave the runway center line and might go outside the uh, uh, runway be it because of the wind or because of an engine failure and if at all the pilot doesn't take quick action in quick time don't worry we are uh, you know trained for that we don't uh, allow the, the, that thing to happen but anyways which if at all a pilot doesn't take uh, action in time then it might be really uh, you know a lot of injuries might occur or it might also be fatal for a few if at all uh, you know the, the aircraft fears off the runway at high speeds and yes if at all anything happens in a landing remember that you are having speed the airplane won't just fall off the sky like a stone instead it will glide it's very aerodynamic just like a leaf it would uh, just glide and obviously you are also already have certain amount of speed so you can you know just uh, put uh, go around thrust you can put toga and you can just go uh, you know uh, uh, around and come in uh, for another attempt of landing but on the takeoff however you have very little margin it might be very very uh, you know uh, you need to be very quick in order and your reflexes should be quick in order uh, to save the aircraft that is why a takeoff is much more dangerous so let's just look at how it might uh, you know uh, look like uh, in the uh, simulator let's go ahead and jump in the cockpit once again all right so i'm giving the uh, takeoff thrust once again i'll uh, you know just quickly show what i'm trying to tell you guys here and for the sake of this one the video i haven't i haven't set up any engine failure or sudden wind changes but uh, just for you explaining to you guys i'm just going to use rudders so yeah speed tape is up alive 
and uh, you know just imagine that suddenly on your takeoff road the engines are really at high power suddenly if an engine fails or if a uh, you know sudden wind comes up just about at uh, say this point right the airplane will just go out and even if I'm, I'm trying to you know control the aircraft you can see how it wobbles and you know it, I was trying to lift the air, air, aircraft away from the ground I was constantly giving up uh, an aft input but the aircraft won't leave the ground because it doesn't have sufficient speed so yeah that is why uh, you, you, you guys could see that how devastating this thing was obviously this is a simulator in an actual aircraft obviously it would be much more uh, dangerous so yeah that's it for this video guys I hope that you would like this one and this video was informative and a fun session as well uh, I know this video might have been a little longer but that's for you uh, to learn anyways which uh, I'll be coming up with such interesting videos and factual videos as well in the coming uh, future so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already and you know activate the notification bell so that you guys get a no notification as soon as I upload a video until then you can watch my other videos you know uh, I'll put up a video on the screen from the ground school series up here until then take care bye bye and happy landings